you may teach by doctrine, gifts. And today I'm teaching by revelation and wisdom. Amen. <clears throat> Spiritual HIV. I read this scripture the other day and it stuck out when it said that where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And so I said to myself, how is it that every evil work can come about where there is envy and strife? I said, this is just like the HIV virus. There must be something in those elements, attributes, that tears down something. <clears throat> you see, the HIV virus, when it comes inside of your system, it attacks the blood cells, the positive CD4 blood cells, <clears throat> the white cells. And these cells build up your immune system. And they help you to fight off infections. That's why they say if you have HIV, if you get it treated, it can prolong things because they're put different things in you to keep your immune system up. But now, the HIV virus is tricky. When it attacks one of those white blood cells, it duplicates it. And it like doubles, makes make duplicates of it. Then it goes in and the virus kills those white blood cells and destroys them which enables the body to fight off infections. Now you start getting other symptoms like flu and this and that. And the highest infection in its worst case is AIDS. But before it gets to the AIDS, the virus has torn down everything in your system that could help prevent infections. And so I said to myself, now, why did it duplicate? the blood cells. Now, I'm not a doctor, but this is the wisdom that I receive. When the virus enters into that blood cell, it duplicates it. Meaning it sort of like multiplies it. And the body, when it looks at the CD4 blood cells, the, to the body it says protection. So all the cells in the body yield to it because these blood cells protect everything else. And so when it is duplicated, in the body, the body system is saying more protection. So the body adjusts itself for the blood cells to go to work, but these other cells are duplicates. And through these duplicates, the HIV virus gets into the system. It's a deception and it begins to destroy it. Envy and strife is a spiritual HIV. It gets into your spirit. And the elements begin to tear down every sense of moral attributes you have, every sense of godliness you have, every sense of soundness of mind that you have, every sense of judgment that you have. It begins to tear down your reason, which allows your spirit to be open to everything but the right thing. And it allows other spirits to come in because now your defense mechanism is down. It's a slow killer. 
They say the virus can be in you for 10 years before it really takes you out. Enemy and strife can be in you for years before it takes you out. Oh, but believe me, it will. Now, brother, read verse 13. Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now, if there's anybody wise in our midst, anyone that has wisdom, man or woman, who walks with the knowledge of God, it's not always expressed in how you talk. But it also has to be expressed as to how you live. That word conversation means the way you live. Out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. Not only in your speech, but in your mannerism. If you have wisdom, sometimes you don't have to speak it because we can see it by the way you carry it. That's right. But then it says this. Read it, read it, verse 14, please. But, but if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. But if you have bitterness, in you. Anybody hear me? And strife. In your heart. Don't rejoice. But and then it said, and don't start lying. Don't start lying. Don't allow these things to cause you to start lying against the truth. Bitterness is anger and disappointment. Now, I would ask you what bitterness was. A lot of people would say it's being mean, being angry, being upset. But bitterness is anger and disappointment at being treated unfairly. Resentment is a mixture of disappointment, anger, and fear. Did you hear what I just said? Bitterness, if you're bitter, it's not because of what you did wrong. It's because of the wrong that was done to you. You become bitter, angry. You are resentful. But yet the Bible says that bitterness can be found in one, but spring up and defile many. So if you're bitter, that means you are angry because you've been done wrong. You are angry because someone has hurt you. And it's evident that they hurt you. But yet, if they're hurting you, if you do not take heed to that bitterness, the hurt that was caused by others in you will cause you to defile many people because it spreads, because you carry it like a virus. You speak on it. You talk about it. How many of us, we are really walking in bitterness because of things that have taken place in our lives? And every time, even though it may have been years ago, when we think about it, we get the same feeling of that anger, that hurt, that disappointment. And then you take those emotions and you share them with others. This is how you spread it. And if it's dealing with familiar people, when they see these other people, they look at them strangely. Not because of their own experience with the individual, but because of your bitter experience that you share, that you spread. So God, help us not to allow the wrongdoing of others toward us to cause us to destroy ourselves. Is anybody hearing me? I feel virtue. That's what bitterness is. In case you thought bitterness was just being mad to like, no, 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 no. It's being angry because of the wrong done to you. 
Even when people do you wrong, you can become just as guilty as they are That's right. by the way you respond. If you don't like the evil that's been bestowed upon you, then don't throw it out. Don't allow evil to settle in your heart. I feel the virtue. If you do not like the way they talk to you and it cause you bitterness, then don't you talk to others like that. Don't you allow that type of speech to be found in your heart. If you're someone that's unstable, anybody can get to you. All they have to do is make you angry so you can become bitter and then leave you. Your bitterness will do the rest. You destroy yourself. And guess what? They were wrong. But their bitterness would not cause you to deal with that wrong. It built up resentment and anger. And of course, they say one of the best ways to deal with bitterness is forgiveness. You may not forget it, but you do have to forget it sometimes to keep it. The effect of it. So, you see, bitterness, you're resentful. Someone says, I'm over it. How do you know if you're really over it? If you're really over it, you don't meditate on it anymore. I examine myself. I say, maybe I got a little resentment and maybe things I say I've gone through with. But every time I think about it, it still bothers me a little. Examine yourself. It, 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 envy is a feeling of discontent. Or resentment. Or a longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or good fortune and blessings. A desire to have. A desire to have. A quality or possession of others, desiring attributes belonging to someone else, envy, jealousy. Envy. You desire that which belongs to others, or you just you, you 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 look at somebody's mannerism and it, it does something to you. You envy it in a bad way. You desire it. Instead of rejoicing with them that rejoice, you want what they got. Instead of commending someone and congratulating someone for achieving something, you think it ought to be you. You want it. You're discontent. You're not satisfied with what God has given you, but you are envious. You're covetous. You, you desire that qualities and things of others you think it should be yours. I feel the virtue. Jealousy is the strongest death and it's as cruel as the grave. Envy and emulation. When I was in school, because I grew up with many inferiorities, I was very popular, not realizing it. In, in several years of music class, I was first chair of school, high school. But uh, I was captain of the football team through popularity. One day, the coach came up to me when I was in junior high to a bunch of guys and said, you know who the most feared guy is in school? On the lower and the higher grades, and we just said who? And he looked at me and said, you will be. I was shocked. Very popular. Didn't know it. Didn't care. But that was this one guy who had a bigger brother that encouraged him. I wasn't quite under any influence. And he would always say to me, what you do, I can do better. Now, he was a well-built guy, I have to say. Nice guy. But he wasn't like some of my partners, streetwise. He broke his arm one day, and he wanted to wrestle me. I could beat you with one arm. So we wrestled him. I pinned him, but he kept moving. And, 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 and until I let him up. He said, you didn't pin me. He said, boy, but you're strong. 
But what he didn't know was I could have pinned him a long time ago. I just didn't understand why he came in like that. I wasn't taught to be uh, that aggressive, you know. His brother was a bodybuilder, well-known, and he was trying to be as a brother. But everything, he said, everything you do, I can do better. I didn't understand that. And all through high school, he kept that attitude. And on the last day, of, this was in junior high, but when we graduated in the senior year, I had graduated with, what, five scholarships with, on the sax, right? He comes up with a saxophone in his hand. He says, whatever you play, I can play it better. So we picked the music up, and he was actually playing. But I'm looking at him like, brother, what? What'd you do, spend the whole high school year learning to play sax? What is wrong with him? I thought about that the other day. But what it was, he envied me. He saw in me what I didn't see. And he used me to motivate himself. I didn't understand that competition. Another friend of mine, a good friend of mine, when I would walk in the door in high school, he'd be sitting on the floor of the door waiting for me. And when I walked through the door, he said, how long did you practice? I looked at him and said, all right. This went on for about a month. Come through the door the next day, he's sitting on the floor. He said, how long did you practice? All night. Next day, you can see the look on his face. How long did you practice? And he was talking about the keyboard. I said, all night. One day I talked to him. He had an accident in his family, and I called to talk to him. I said, so what you doing after music? You hired He went to school, got scholarship for drums and everything. He said, oh, man, I'm playing at a hotel. I said, what, so, you, what, you playing in a combo? He said, no, I got a soundtrack. He said, I'm playing the piano. I said, oh, you switched to the piano. Yeah, I've been playing it for 12 years now. That stemmed from how long did you practice? All night. Learn to rejoice with them that rejoice. If you use people for encouragement, do it in a good way. Not because you envy. You think it ought to be you. You desire what they have for yourself. You're discontent. When you envy, you're discontent with yourself. Strife is anger or bitter disagreement over fundamental things, issues, or conflict. So now you've got a person that's envious, dissatisfied, discontent with themselves. They want what everybody else got. They want to be better than. They, they can't stand the ground you walk on because they think that they should be walking on it and not you. And there's something in you that just vexes them the wrong way because they might see some trait in you that's a threat or whatever it may be. But in any in, in way go, you shouldn't have it. You ain't the one. They're not the one, brother. They shouldn't have it. You're the one. And then you cover that with strife. Strife is anger. Strife is anger. And strife is a bitter disagreement. Contentious. See, watch this. Not only who do they think they are. Ah, not only is there something about them that vexes me, not only do I feel intimidated when they come because I'm not content with myself. I think I ought to have what they have. I think I ought to be like them. Not only that, uh, and they've done nothing wrong, but you've got strife behind it. You're contentious behind it. You're angry. You are in disagreement. So when it comes to that situation, you can never walk with it. Because number one, you envy it. You don't even think they should be or have the right. Number two, you are angry with disagreement and contention. 